Hello, young cyclists. And this is the story of Peter. He has enjoyed fun and adventure on his bicycle since he learned how in the National Cycling Proficiency Scheme. Peter is lucky, though. He has two of the nicest parents you could have, and they are wise, too. When they decided to buy Peter a bicycle, they asked the local road safety officer about the national scheme and were delighted to find that it is specially designed to show young cyclists how to be really skillful. It is packed with interest. There are films, film strips and demonstrations, and the instructors are specially chosen for their job. The whole scheme is sponsored by the Ministry of Transport and run by the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents. That was good enough for Peter's parents. Peter's father had uh, ridden a bicycle and driven a car for many years. He knew that only thorough training and experience on his bicycle would make their boy a much better road user both now and in the future. None of that nonsense about their son growing into his bicycle either. Constable Smith of the local police had said, you're not buying the lad a pair of trousers, you know. You're going to give him a vehicle to drive and he will have to obey the highway code and the law. He can't do these things if his feet won't touch the ground and he is bothered by an uncomfortable riding position. So Peter's mum and dad went along to a cycle shop where the sergeant had said that they would be advised about the correct frame size by the manager, who was himself an examiner in the national scheme. Every boy and girl wants a smart bicycle, but that is no use if the rider is going to look awkward. So Peter chooses his bicycle with care, whilst Dad does the pain. Lots of people say that there is nothing in riding a bicycle, but Peter and his parents knew that a good bicycle doesn't make a good rider. That takes a little time. So, Peter joined a cycling class at school and learned about road signs and lots of other important things from one of the teachers. He used the flannel graph to show where he would make weekly checks and also to build pictures of various road hazards. Constable Smith himself told the boys and girls how to speak the language of the road with signs and signals. A local cycling club member showed how important it was to have brakes properly adjusted with the brake blocks in the right way round. On this boy's bicycle, the saddle and handlebars are too high. His legs are stretched to the utmost and the position of his feet on the pedals will make cycling jolly hard work for him. So, a skilled cyclist adjusts the machine to enable the rider to be comfortable. The handlebars and the saddle are lowered and the brake levers readjusted so that they are easily used without any loss of control of the bicycle. Proper tension in the chain is important. Here is the manager of a cycle shop showing how bicycle brakes should work.
These are the proper spanners to use when simple adjustments are made to the chain to prevent it jumping off the chain wheel. Young cyclists are not expected to be mechanics, but in the test they are expected to be able to demonstrate simple maintenance and adjustment. See how easily the schoolmaster rides his bicycle. His feet are in the right position on the pedals, and he always has his machine under control by using his brakes. When Peter joined the training class, he was just as uncertain as these youngsters. See how the girl uses her legs badly. She really doesn't know what to do with her knees. This boy has a nice pedaling action, although he is not quite sure of himself. He has only just started his training, however, and will have time to learn. Did you know that starting and stopping a bicycle requires quite a lot of skill, especially in heavy traffic? A very cautious little girl, this one. This boy is giving a good signal, and there he goes, into the curb, quite safely. The instructor demonstrates how to stop in an emergency. The brakes must be applied firmly, but there must be no skidding. Then the bicycle must be parked neatly against the curb, so that it won't fall over or obstruct other traffic. This young lady can't stop quickly enough. She must learn to brake more efficiently than that, or one day she may hit the back of a bus. All these things come out in training, however, and are put right. This chap is more confident, but look, that's no good in traffic. This girl is more sure of herself. And this one is a nice rider. See how well controlled her bicycle is. Far too many people are hurt when they are turning right in traffic. This schoolmaster shows how it should be done. He takes up the correct position on the road. He stops at the junction and then looks right, then left, then right again, giving the signal to traffic behind that he is going to turn. When it is safe to do so, he goes into the main road and gives a quick right-hand signal to make sure that the young cyclists understand. Lots of young cyclists think that because they pedal slowly and travel fast, they do less work. They don't, of course. At slow speeds, their pedalling is harder. And this is called gearing. If your cycle has a three-speed mechanism, choose a low gear in traffic. This boy's gear is lower, and you see, it helps him to control his bicycle more effectively. This young lady is growing up fast, and her bicycle is becoming too small for her. But it still carries her about, and she has fairly good control of it. But did you see that? She did look right and left, but not right again, did she? 
At this junction, there is no hope sign to remind the young riders, but they still stop at the junction and look both ways before going into the main road. That is the proper thing to do, isn't it? This cyclist is looking behind, giving the signal and taking position towards the centre of the road. He slows down, looks both ways, and then, as there is no traffic about, goes across the main road. When you have an audience like this, it is not always easy to do the right thing or remember the things you have been told to do. This girl, however, is remembering to use her brakes and is pedalling properly. Remember the art of stopping and starting? Here is a rider leaving the curb, giving the signal, and then, when she has finished her test, parking her bicycle with the examiners looking on. That's right. Look behind before joining the stream of traffic, and don't forget that signal. Turning right is tremendously important, especially when you are on busy roads. Peter did his turn correctly and gained a lot of marks in the test. This young lady is turning left at traffic lights. While all this is going on, voluntary examiners are watching the children and awarding marks. Here is a housewife examiner watching cyclists stop at a pedestrian crossing. This lad is going through his Holstein drill. Not too bad, number 19, but you uh, didn't look both ways, did you? You'll lose a lot of marks for that. Our cycle shop man examines the rider's brakes. He asks the young lady whether she knows how to adjust hers. That's right. Now, what about the chain? Is this right? There is a lot more in the training and testing than we have been able to show you in this film. All the tests end like this, however, with the children who have passed receiving their national certificates and badges. They look happy enough, don't they? On nice days like this, they will be off on their bicycles to thoroughly enjoy themselves. Most local authorities take particular interest in the training of young cyclists in their area, through them and the police, volunteer instructors and examiners from all walks of life do a tremendous job in teaching young road users how to be skillful now and in the future. Peter is just one of 300,000 young cyclists who must be trained every year so that the good habits they learn during cycle training will help to reduce accidents on the roads now and in the future. Well, Peter has finished his training and passed his test successfully. He has worked hard and deserves the national certificate and badge that he receives from the mayor. The chief education officer says how important it is to go on riding skillfully. Other road users can easily see the difference between those who have been trained and those who haven't. A policeman wishes Peter lots of adventure, a wheel. And there he goes. See how well he gives the signal? The traffic behind knows what he is going to do. Can you ride as well as Peter? Shall I see you soon? I am an instructor and I enjoy showing you how to get fun and safety from your bike. Cheerio, young cyclists, and do ask your road safety officer for details of the national proficiency scheme so that you can be trained too.